Now to get started, we're going to add some segmentation and then a background to this. So we'll right click, add rectangle. And that will automatically make this canvas here. We can rename this canvas user and user for the rectangle. And so this user is going to need a material. And first we'll fill width and fill height. Then add a new material. Rename it to mat underscore user. Change the type to flat. And then the texture and alpha we need to get from the camera. Texture here. And the alpha is going to be the segmentation for the person. And now back in this material, we'll grab this texture and the alpha. And now it looks the same here, but you can tell it's working here. You can kind of see my outline there, especially if I move it. And that's it for the segmentation. Now to add the background, we're actually going to use a 3D object. So I'll jump over to Cinema 4D. And I have this hallway image that I already cropped to be square. So I'll drag this in. And that automatically creates a material here. And now I just need to make a polygon and the orientation should be negative Z. And now we can just drop this material right on top. And it's a little blurry, so we'll double click this, go to viewport, make sure this is 1024. And I'm gonna turn off this grid just so it's out of the way. All right, so now we have a very basic kind of tunnel or hallway shape. I'll hit C to make this editable. And we'll just make some lines here just so we can push back this middle section. So hitting ME, we go to Polygon Pen Tool. And with points selected, we can just draw straight across here, add some edges. And then we'll just draw a little square here where this back is. And it's a little wobbly. If I adjusted any of these points, it would stretch. So we need to change this from UVW mapping to flat and then right click it and do fit to object. Now I can move these around and it won't skew everything. Actually, I can just delete this middle point. So this is a quad. Now with all these lined up, because we're using flat projection, if I select this and pull this back, you can see there's no skewing. And if we're looking right at the front, actually in this view, as we move this backward and forward, you can see in this view, there's no stretching because we're still kind of projecting from this orthographic view. And so now if we go to display and go constant shading, that will remove any lights. And so now you can see we have this nice little 3D hallway and it's just an image on this basic shape, but it gives it a little bit of depth. So if we place our user inside and that user moves around, we can get a little bit of this depth in there. So we'll export this object. We'll call this hallway. Under file, export selected, FBX. And we want selection only. We do want normals. And to double check the normals actually, we'll select the faces and select all. And this looks good. We want the orangish yellow ones to be visible on this side because the blue side is the back facing polygons. So those generally don't render, at least in Spark. So we're good there. And we will bring this right into Spark. And it looks like it's automatically compressing this texture. We'll, we'll see what it does. If it does a good job, we can just use whatever it does. Otherwise, we can compress it with Crushy. So now I'll just drop this hallway directly in here. And already you can see it kind of lined up where we want it. For this material, though, we don't want standard. We'll use flat. And then make sure the color is set to pure white. And you can see it's back there, but you can't see it behind me. So we need to drop this model above the canvas. That way this renders before the canvas does. So now you can see I'm inside this hallway. And what's nice about this shape is we can take the mesh or the model 
and scale it back. And that'll just push the hallway further back. Or just make it really subtle up close. But right now it still looks like a static image. You don't see anything going on. So we need to add a little bit of motion to this. So we'll use the head position to control very subtly where this moves. So for the hallway model, we'll key this position with the patch. And then we need to grab the face location. So right click, add face tracker. And then here we can just drag this directly in. And we want to use some smoothing on this. So first we'll take the 3D position, unpack this. And then on these three, we'll use exponential smoothing. Make sure to connect these three up. And then we need to repack these. And then I think we want to divide by two as well, just to make this value not as drastic because we won't, don't want it totally locked to our face. So now you can see as I move around, this hallway slowly follows me. It's almost as if we're simulating what a cameraman would be doing, following someone and moving their camera around a little bit. And it looks like that's it for that. You can see the hallway is actually further back now. And that's because this hallway is in the focal distance. If we pull it back out, now this point is closer to where my face is actually tracked. So now we can just grab this mesh and kind of push it back where we want it to be. And we can probably scale this down as well. See a little bit more of the top and bottom of it. And you do have to be careful though, if you make it too small, it'll start clipping here on the bottom. So you can either scale it up or just move it back a little bit. Now we have a 3D hallway.